Hi guys, Samantha from GSMA Tutorials here and today I'm going to be doing another one of my Let's Fix It videos where I take this piece that I made oh, roughly about I'd say five years ago uh, and we are going to make it better. So, first thing is you're going to need a little ball of white clay. Now I make a pair of earrings so you want to, before you do anything else, measure out two balls of white clay that are roughly the same size, which I did before starting this tutorial. And this is the shape that we want to make it into. So it doesn't have to be a perfect shape, but you want it to be roughly this shape. Okay, so right now you do not have to worry about your um, clay getting dirty. We are going to be doing a little bit of sanding and cleaning up before we apply our mixed media effects. And generally I like using a um, acrylic block to do this next step where I will take it and use it to start shaping it and I will use my fingers as well because I'm not too worried about fingerprints either because again that can be fixed later on and you want to get roughly to the same length so that's about right and then I'll use this to even it out and at this point because it's one colour of clay you mess up, just pop it back into your, um, just pop it back through a pasta machine or just roll it straight back into a ball and start again. Okay, so I'm going to just check now whether that's about the right shape. Okay, and now because we're going to be putting it through a piercing pin, you've got to also make it just a touch longer than your. Uh, than one that is on the piercing pin because uh, the piercing pin is going to push it in a little bit and so we'll end up shortening it so just bear that in mind so that's basically the right shape now I'm going to bring over a piercing pin this one's a little rusty but it'll be fine because I need one that has the same size hole as the other one and all I'll do is I'll start by drilling a hole on one end and hole in the other. Now you might be wondering why don't I just bake this and use a pin drill like I always do. And you could definitely do that. It's just that it's a very long piece. To drill this would be a lot of work to drill through. And also we can end up sh we can shape it again on the piercing pin. So it's alright if you use something to create a hole while it is raw. Just go slowly and gently. You do not want to be shoving it onto this pin. And I tend to go from both ends, that way if my hole is skew, I will just meet up sometime in the middle and then it will come out looking straight, which is the most important thing. Okay, and there we go, I will set that onto my piercing pin. And then you can roll it on your tile to smooth out any imperfections. I'm just going to bring this forward just a touch. So that it's easier for me to shape. Yeah, let me run down the side here and get rid of this rather large lip. I smooth here with my fingers. I'll do the same up here so it's nice and smooth. Okay, then I'll bring over the other one and I'm going to compare. And they look pretty much the same. So you could leave it like that and then we will do some sanding. Uh, but one thing that I do want to do actually is I'm going to bring up some isopropyl alcohol. And this is 99%. Anything above 50 will work. And I want you to spray that onto a wet wipe. So I'm doing that. And then run that down your sides. Gently scrub it, essentially. And this will get rid of a lot of the dirt. It's not going to get rid of everything, but it will do a fair amount of work for you. So here's, don't worry about that, we will get rid of that later on with the sanding. But that's a great way to get rid of dirt. Also, it will smooth out any fingerprints. Because the isopropyl alcohol actually removes a fair amount of the top surface of the clay. So this still looks a little dirty, 
it can be very easily fixed once it's sanded. Picking out hairs and things like that will end up distorting and nicking the piece, so do not go and do that. We will do that with the sanding. Just smoothing it out, making sure that I'm happy with it. Here we go, they both look pretty much the same. So now I'm going to put that into the oven and that needs to bake for around at least 60 minutes at your brand's recommended temperature. Uh, because this is a fairly thick piece and if you do not bake it for a full hour it will be brittle and unbaked in the middle and that is not something that you want. Now to bake it you want to have some sort of a prop. So a nice thing to use is a ceramic tile. So if I bring that over. So here's one of my baking tiles. And you want to make sure that it's high enough. So if it's not high enough you can always just prop another ceramic tile on top of it. And then you just prop these pieces down onto the tile and bake them. Okay, so these are out of the oven. Now this one I have just finished sanding with a 400 grit and it's not completely perfect but it is pretty good for the moment. So this one I'm going to show you quickly how to sand. So let's work that off of our piercing pin. And this can be a little hard to do. So let me just do that quickly. So I just got a pair of pliers to hold this and then I was able to get off. So now we want to sand it because it's got some bits and pieces on here that I just don't really want. Them. So just grab a 400 grit piece of wet dry sanding paper and you're going to sand those edges, the top and the bottom. And it does not need to be a vigorous sand, it does not need to have a nice polished surface. Matt will work just fine. You just want to go over those edges and the top and just work away any dirt or grime that is left. Okay, so now we are ready to start decorating them. So what I would advise doing is grabbing your piercing pin. Actually no, no we won't grab our piercing pin. Just grab this and a toothbrush. I find that I get the best result by using a toothbrush but you can use another uh, coarse brush for this step. Drop some yellow alcohol ink and this is uh, Sun Bright Yellow by Pinata. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dip my toothbrush in that and I'm going to start brushing that, more like pouncing it over the surface and it gives me this interesting pattern that I won't get from just using an alcohol ink dab or something like that. And you can wear gloves at this point if you do not wish to get alcohol ink on your uh, fingers. But I don't really mind. Okay, now I don't want to cover up all white. That should be enough. Then I am going to move on to brown. This is Burrow Brown. Just drop a little bit down there. Okay, and I'm not going to worry about cleaning off the toothbrush. I'm going to drop a little bit on, and I'm going to be a little bit more sparing with this one because it's not as light of a colour, and so a little goes a long way. Just dab that over the surface as much or as little as you like. Okay. Then I am going to move on to chili pepper, which is a nice red, and all of these are pinata inks. And I'm not going to clean off my brush because I like the colours to kind of intermingle with one another. And then again, I'm just going to pop that over the surface. And just essentially carry on doing that until you are happy with your result. Okay, now I know this looks like a mess, don't worry about it. Next step is going to be to clean off our brush. So I'm just bringing over a wet wipe here and some isopropyl alcohol. 
I'm spraying it. Just cleaning off most of that. And we can worry about this mess later on. Then I am going to take a bit more red because I want the red to be a somewhat more dominant colour. And I'm going to spray lightly my toothbrush with some isopropyl by alcohol. Uh, anything above 50% will work. I'm just going to dab that off a bit inside of the red to get a nice coat. And then I'm going to dab that over the surface and that will give us this interesting kind of water blooming effect with the alcohol ink. And I might do a few more layers because each layer adds to the next. Okay, and at this point I might actually bring over my piercing tool so that I don't touch it because you can introduce fingerprint marks. Just continue doing this until you are again happy with your result. Okay, and here they are. So now we are going to move on to adding some lettering. So I've got a uh, letter stamp here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just quickly wet backside a little bit with some alcohol just so that it makes it sticky because it will um, stick to my tile and that will just make things easier there we go that's pretty much stuck on then you want some stays on ink and you want your piercing pin again and I'm just going to stick that in and I want to make sure that I have enough to do something like this I want to just position it in the right uh, spot, so I'm going to just go over another tile and I'm going to stick this on the end of it so that when I roll I can get a nice even roll because you can see here the piercing pin is facing down whereas if I had it like I was on a tile you're not going to get as even a roll and coverage. I hope that made sense. So I've got some stays on ink. Just going to ink up this stamp. Make sure you have a nice decent cover. Okay. I'm going to grab this and I am going to roll. Okay. And I stopped because I did not want to get an overlap. Which is quite important. Just quickly blow that just to set that ink. Then I will get that off the piercing pin and we should be able to do the other one. Yep. Okay. And then you can see that as well. It does not have to be perfect just want that imprint there. And I'll grab that off and clean up your uh, texture stamp. Okay, then the next step is going to be to use some little uh, stamps such as these. These are just ones that I got off of uh, eBay. So I'm just selecting the ones that I want and then I will give them a quick clean. So a fair amount of it is staining from my stays on ink. So I'm going to start with the rose. And I'm going to bring over one of these and I'm actually going to hold it in my hands this time around. Grab my rose. Get a, I want to make sure that I get a nice decent amount of ink on there. And then I am going to roll that on there, like so. And I also am going to probably do the same thing on the top. I don't want to overdo the amount of um, stuff that I put on here. So you stamp it on and then you roll to get those leaves on there. 
like so. Okay, then I'll repeat that with this one. Okay, and I think I want to add just one little flower. Like so. And I will repeat with this one in this empty spot over here. Place. And then roll it on, like so. Okay, then put your stays on the ink away, let it dry on here, and then we can move on to adding our gold leaf. Okay, and you're going to need a little bit of translucent liquid clay. Now, preferably, uh, get a shiny brand such as Kato translucent liquid clay. And the reason you want a shiny brand is because we're going to use this to attach our uh, metal leaf. And if it's matte, kind of like a Sculpey brand, you will find that it um, creates a matte look on your piece, which is something that I do not want. So I've just got some metal leaf off to the side here. I'm just going to dip a tiny bit. And then apply it to the piece like so and then just continue applying the liquid clay and then kind of getting it to rip off naturally and then apply it to your piece like so okay and then once you're done pop them back onto their piercing pins like so Another e and then you want to put them into the oven for about oh no more than 20 minutes uh, but I would definitely go for longer than 15 about 20 minutes roughly 20 to 30 minutes and this is to first of all heat set that liquid clay secondly it is going to heat set the stays on ink and the alcohol ink so that it's um, all well sealed and uh, put together well and then we're going to be putting a little bit of resin on. You can also put varathane on, but I find that the uh, alcohol ink tends to smudge with varathane. So preferably use uh, either uh, translucent liquid clay. You can give it another brush of liquid clay to give it a varnish and then heat gun that. Or you can put this uh, into a UV light with some resin. And I will show you that. Because um, we want a nice shiny finish and we do need to seal it. So when this is done, we will do that. Now again, bake for 30 minutes to 20 minutes. Okay, so they're out of the oven. And you'll notice that the alcohol ink has dulled just a touch after being in the oven, uh, which means it has basically been heat set. And so now we are ready to apply our resin. So before we do anything, you want to have a UV lamp off to the side ready to go, because when we put this under the UV lamp, you're going to need to hold it and spin it until the UV um, resin sets to the touch. Um, which should happen in about a minute and then after that you can just prop that up on something inside the UV light for it to cure for another 15 minutes. Don't leave it in there any longer than 15 minutes because the UV uh, light will dull the alcohol ink. So I'll show you that when we get around to it. Okay, so also set up, so let's begin. So I'm going to be using this UV resin. Uh, it cures very quickly, you can brush it on it in a thin layer and it works very well for this. I'm also going to be using a UV resin dedicated brush. And now to make these easy, I'm just going to put a little pool of UV resin off the side here. Do not have your UV light on at the moment. Um, only put that on once you are ready to cure your piece, because it will cure this resin. And then I'm just going to start brushing that on. And do not put on a hugely thick layer. You want a decent layer so that it covers the piece, but you don't want it to be so thick that it's going to be dripping all over the place. And this brings up another reason why you put it in the oven. Uh, you'll find that if you do not put it in the oven, the um, oh gosh, the alcohol ink will smudge very easily. It still probably will smudge a little bit while you're doing this, so you want to work fast. Um, but you don't have to worry about it too much. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, I'm just 
just going to coat the bottom and I'm just going to show you the entire process of one bead and then when we're done with that I will um, I'll do the other one off camera so if you want to skip ahead uh, feel free to now we're definitely going to have a little bit of unevenness little bits of drips here and there so I'm just going to take my brush now and I'm just going to rub over the whole surface and then just spin it and you should be able to see uh, whether or not you've got open spots because as you turn it you should be able to see those so go in and fill those because you want a nice smooth gloss like finish And I think we are almost there. I'll spend a little bit more time examining it and then when I'm done I'll show you the next step. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with it. Now I'm going to bring over my UV light which will be here. And actually before I do that, and I want to continue spinning this while I'm doing this, I have two little silicone mats here so that I can prop this up when I'm done spinning, spinning it. If I'm, out, I'm just going to bring over the UV light. And I am going to just spin this to keep it nice and even and then when I'm happy I'll switch on the UV light and stick this in and just continue turning for about a minute and then when that is done you can then just prop that up so I'll continue doing that and then when that's done I will coat the other piece but then you will leave them into the UV light for about 15 minutes after that, take them out of the UV light, let them sit for another five minutes just to make sure that that resin is completely set um, before we move on to the next step. Do not leave it any longer than 15 minutes because the alcohol ink will double. Okay, and here they are. So you can see they're really beautiful now that we've put that resin on and just smoothed everything over. So now the next step is going to be to work these off of the pins. Now this might be a little bit of a, um, a tricky process, but we should be able to do it. So let's do this one. So you're going to need some pliers. Now this uh, could be a little tricky, so uh, be careful. But basically, you want to take the pliers and you want to push down. And this is going to make a noise, so you might want to turn the sound down. There we go. And that is why I want to make sure that the resin was completely cured before doing that because otherwise you would have got a dent in it. Okay, so now you can trim off this little bit over here but I'm going to try and hide that for the most part with some little spacer beads because if we sand it we risk sanding the rest of the resin which is not something that I want. So I'll pop that off to the side and I'll bring over the supplies that we are going to be using. Okay, so first thing we're going to need is a head pin. So I've got a little gold head pin here, and I have a nice little spacer, little gold spacer bead to go on there. String that on. Then I will bring over my piece, and I will put that on as well. And then one more spacer bead. Okay, and that will hide those little uh, ends pretty well. And take your pliers. And I want to create a small loop. Like so. Put that to the side. I will bring over another head pin. This time I'm going to have the same spacer as we did before, a little gold spacer. A black 6mm round onyx bead another spacer then I'll create a loop on one end and now there are detailed videos on YouTube on how to create these loops I don't really have uh, the tools to show you that perfectly because you need nice close-ups on it uh, Fire Mountain Gems actually has some really nice videos that show how to uh, do these very basic techniques so I'd recommend checking that out now when you're clipping hold both pieces because you do not want that flying up into your face and hurting you. Okay, 
then we're going to do another little loop. Then I'm just going to correct this so that they both face the same way. Right, and then we're ready to assemble. So I've got a little ear wire. And I'll open up one of these loops. And attach the ear wire. Open up this second loop at the bottom. And I'll attach our polymer clay piece. There we go, that's about it. Very simple. It, uh, this part up here is completely optional. You could just attach the earring over here if you wanted to, uh, but I wanted to add the little bit of extra, the uh, little extra embellishment. Let me bring up the other one, which I have already done. And there we go, so they're kind of oriental uh, water splash sort of earrings. I was just playing around and having fun. Um, you can see they're a lot more colourful than this piece over here. This one's kind of dull. You can add less alcohol ink if you want more of the white shop. Also this one I sealed quite badly with liquid clay and you can see that what once was gold leaf now has tarnished quite considerably. Uh, and so yeah, I definitely think these are a nice improvement. So, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are. If you like the series of me going back through some of my older pieces and fixing them, let me know as well, because I am quite enjoying it. Um, so let me know in the comments your thoughts on that. Uh, also, if you would like to support this channel so that I can continue putting up videos like this every single week, please do consider becoming a patron. I will leave a link to that in the description below. You get exclusive videos on there and other perks such as a discount to my Etsy store. Uh, visiting my Etsy store is also another great way to support my um, YouTube channel. So please do consider checking that out. And as always, I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.